भद्रम कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिरंगुवागुंसस्तनु व्यशेम देवितयदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शातिशाशाति हरि ओ डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द स्टडी of the munnaka upanishad which we have been studying for the last several weeks we had completed the prathama khanda of the prathama munnaka i always make mistakes in translating chapter and section and all that now i hope you are all aware of it and let us read it as such prathama munnaka Pratama Khanda, we have completed that. Last session, I totally devoted to give you a background of how these thought processes evolved, which finds place in our various Upanishads. The Karma Khanda part of the Upanishads of the Vedas, and. the gana kanda part of the vedas known as otherwise upanishad or even veda anta the culmination of vedic pursuit for knowledge anyway we are now in the second khanda ditiya khanda of the prathama mundaka now what is it all about dear very quickly the student asked the teacher sir is there anything in this world knowing knowing which experiencing which nothing else remains to be known i am totally satisfied satiated and i have no disturbance or restlessness anymore i am poised in the excellence the majesty the reality of my own being is there anything it in this world available sir he is a mahashala he is a man of enlightenment man of achievement man who is highly successful in worldly measure what does it mean it means he has experienced all that the world has to offer please keep in mind why is it so why it is being sent, mentioned that way he is a mahashala a man of great achievement man of get great accomplishment man of success man very well enlightened why that means he has lived lived in this world with great success what does it mean he has experienced the whole world with his five sense organs with his body mind complex he has lived in this world and he has a world of experience even having that experience he is not satisfied why he finds there is no end to it this ever running never reaching so he wants to stop this so he goes to a person who is authorized to teach him because he has he has been handed over this divine wisdom from the divine from generation to generation and at his generation angi rasha was the rishi the knower of the self so what does it mean 
we live in this world, we succeed in this world, we enjoy all that world has offered, but I find there is no end to it. It carries on, it carries on, it carries on. So he has been seeing how ups and downs take place in life, how pleasure and pain swings in between, agony and ecstasy, success and failure. He has experienced all that. Now he feels a bit tired. He wants to have a place where he is poised in the majesty, excellence, and regality of his own true being. Experiencing this world is a necessary prerequisite to know how hollow it is. He has achieved that. With that mental attitude, he wants to know, is there anything, sir, knowing which all my desire of running around to achieve will come to a stop. As because that was paramount in his mind, so the Rishi told him firstly, what by knowing which all your hunger and thirst and restlessness to know will come to a halt. Yaya tadaksharam arigamnyate. There is a one branch of learning which you know very well leads to world and worldly successes interacting with the world and the other is by means of which you be one with that absolute, immutable, infinite, eternal, and where to find it? It is your true original nature. And he says, Adhigamyate, that is the word that the Upanishad has used. Adhigamyate means, I'm sorry, Adhipurvaka Gamadhatu, to reach, to arrive, to achieve, a motion. What is that motion? Evolution of your personality by acquiring information, transforming that information into an education, cogitation, and then abhinnataya prapyate. Adhigamyate means abhinnataya prapyate. There is no object and subject. I see you. I see you all. I am the seer. I am. My object of vision is there. I see them. The subject, the knower, the object of knowledge, and the process of knowing. That is how the worldly knowledge is derived. I know, that means I am at this end, you are at the other end, and there's a process of knowing in between which generates knowledge, thereafter experience. Here what happens? I grow, I grow, I grow, and then I don't outgrow the object, I merge with it. Being and becoming one with the object, the subject and object becomes one. How does it happen? The concept of separateness between you and me is a concept which creates duality. I and you. When I, by a particular time-tested process known as sadhana, genuine, devoted, disciplined, dedicated effort, I evolve. 
I get information, I educate myself, and I, through that instruction, I evolve, 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 and then march with it. The separateness has disappeared. Abhinnataya prapyate. That is, you and your object of meditation becomes one. I am meditating on my Ishta. Good enough. I am, I am meditating, I am meditating on my Lord God of the universe, my Ishta Dev. And because I am aware I am, because now I am aware my Ishta Dev is, I am aware there is a process of meditating, deep thinking. A flow of thought processes uninterrupted. And I say, I know. I know he exists, but I am he is. That separateness is there. Abhinnataya prapyate is that separateness removes and you merge into it. And there are many examples to clarify this idea. One example is a river. What is a river? Nothing is but a mass of flowing water. What is an ocean? A huge infinite mass of water. And the river flows. Why do I call it a river? Because that mass of water is contained by the left bank, by the right bank, and the base, the bottom, the bed of the river. So left bank, right bank, the base of the bottom of the river, bed of the river, and the water is flowing. I call it a river. Now, this parameter river reaches the harbor, and enters the ocean. This water known as Parameter River, this water has merged with the ocean water. In water manner, you can't separate it anymore. Prior to that what happened, before that what happened, this water in the Parameter River was identified as a mass of water contained by the left bank, contained by the right bank, and contained by the bed. That mass of water, because it was contained, it has limitations, that is why it was separate. Now it has merged through the harbor into the ocean. The separateness has disappeared. You can't retrieve that back. Irretrievably lost. The river has lost its identity. It has abhinnataya prapyate. The separateness of the river water has disappeared and that water has merged with ocean. I am my object of meditation is that supreme being and I keep on thinking, flowing towards him, contained by that concept of my amness, my separateness. That hold of separateness slowly and slowly and slowly disappears, much irretrievably locked. I can't bring that back again. Just merge. That is my true original nature, which is the subject matter of this para vidya vishaya. It is the subject matter of para vidya. That para vidya 
you will be very benefited and profited if you try to reach that having acquired a little experience of this world in which we live, move and have our being and we interact with five sense organs and the mind and we have experienced it is transitory, it is ephemeral, it is not real, but it gives a shape of reality. It makes a show of reality, but in reality it is not. It appears to be real, but it is not real. Without that precondition, without that background, how can you go there? You will get stuck here. That is why Opera Vidya Vishaya, I keep on telling you, is not the ultimate, but it is indispensable to prepare you to reach that goal. Try to think of it, that this is required. I gather experience. That experience tell me which is profitable for me, which is beneficial for me, which is less costly for me, which is, <coughs> which is more advantageous for me, until and unless I go until and unless I go through that experience, how can I make up? Therefore, opera vidya has to be learned. This is how, dear, the second khanda of the Prathama Mundaka starts. We had made an introduction. Let us now go ahead. Let me read it firstly. Tadetat Satyam. This is Abhitatam Satyam. It is a fact of life, not a reality. It is apparently real. What is apparently real? The rishis and the munis who have seen through this ball game, those who have walked this walk and reached their goal, they say in the three Vedas, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda, in these three Vedas and also in the age of Trita Yuga when Sri Rama was born, at that age, the rishis, the kavis, krantadarshinas, those who have seen the end, they have studied and they have found out that there are many, many, many mantras. Mantras are direction towards correct performance. What to do, what not to do. And if it is to be done, how it has to be done, no deviation, total self-disciplined control. What does it mean? This human personality, which is absolutely mad, jumping like a grasshopper all the time, directionless, how can this human being be totally disciplined. Discipline is required. So mantras are statements found in the Vedas which are based on experience of various rishis and kavis, Kranta Darshina, who says you want to enjoy the good results of your good deeds. Come, I will teach you what to do, what not to do. These three Vedas, they have two sections, one known as Karma Khanda, full of such mantras and instructions, and the other is known as Jnana Khanda, the introspective journey within, whereby you would know who you are in reality. So here the second khanda, Dithya khanda says that look, 
इफ यू आर सुकृत लोके इफ यू आर सत्य काम इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रीच दैट एंड वॉट इज दैट एंड येस आई एम प्रिपेयर टू लिसन टू यू I want to enjoy eternal life in paradise in heaven. That concept of heaven and hell is the highest common factor of all religions. And Vedanta says it's a passing phase. You start from kindergarten, you end up as a world famous research scholar. You have grown. This is also in the path of growth if you want to have it have to enjoy the results of your good deed eshava pantha sukritasya loke sukritasya loke that you are doing good deeds in your life virtuous deeds in your life you are following verbatim in spirit whatever the mantras dictate to you you will enjoy the results of these good deeds known as swarga loka and there are various stages of swarga but you are generating those by your well disciplined well trained body mind complex you are following the injunctions of the vedas in the form of mantras you are following perfectly correctly thoroughly and you are creating a karma phala every performance yields a result so what happens i perform according to it and i generate virtue sukriti good deeds and when this body falls off those good deeds takes me to that world that i have earned by the sweat of my brow i have earned it in my life but what is the end result as because i have earned it by creating good deeds and good results i enjoy the fruits of those results and a time comes when the bank balance is zero what happens to me i come back to square one with this experience this what i have earned is perishable it is not everlasting so i am intelligent person do i come to this conclusion that nothing which is imperishable can be created whatever is created by my acts and deeds will give me results but the results are enjoyable and then exhausted perishable <coughs> then i sit quietly and i think is it worthwhile from my brahmacharya ashrama till i die i have been performing duties of my life guided by the vedic mantras instructions and as because i was born i had to die i died with a huge basket full of good virtuous deeds because of those good virtuous deeds i go to heaven there are various grades of heavens according to my grades of achievement but in heaven i don't create anything i only have the capacity of enjoying the fruits of my creation sukriti's good work so it's like drawing on a bank balance without putting anything on the credit side so it will dwindle and dwindle and dwindle and one day it will be zero 
what happens to me? I am given another occasion to work out my destiny. I come back to this life again. This is how it circles. After a birth, after another birth, after another birth, I am exposed to these ideas. I start thinking, I am spending my life with discipline, with dedication, devotion, determination, with dexterity. I am doing that. And at the result, after a while, everything is lost and I come back to work out my destiny again in this Bhuvana, Bhuvana Loka. So what have I achieved? A short span of enjoyable life. But it is an endless circle and I am tired. And that's what Swamiji meant by saying, I am tired of this unending farce. This dream does please no more. This ever running, never reaching, nor even a distant glimpse of short. The second khanda starts with this idea. And there are nine shlokas in this khanda, in this sector, section. First few shlokas tells you what you have to do. No compromise, whether fair or foul, you have to do it. And you remember you are a creature of circumstances. There may be such circumstances with the best effort and which you can't do it the way it has been mentioned. You have failed. So all your sukritis are lost. In return, you have achieved duskriti, failures. This is how he will explain to you. Let me now read it for you and go ahead. Enough of introductory explanations. He says, look, <coughs> Kabaya, I'm sorry, Kabaya means Rishi, Manishina, who have seen the end of this ball game. They did not become a Rishi in the first life. They have also gone through Banaprastha Ashrama, Brahmacharya Ashrama, Grastha Ashrama, Banaprastha Ashrama. They have gone through it, but they kept their sense of discrimination open, discretion open. What I am achieving, a lifelong effort and say more than two lives of enjoyment, lifespan of enjoyment. Come back again, again the same quote. He develops this idea. What is this about? I am spending my lifetime and I'm getting back this. I'm being given an opportunity and I'm committing the same mistake. Is there any other method? how to utilize my life. So in the eight, nine, eighth shloka of this, eighth verse of this khanda, second sector, section, he says, Pariksha lokan karma chitana brahmano nirveda mayat nasti akrita kritena. Pariksha lokan. Having gone through this repeated experience, I would rather say, let us study this shloka now so that we will understand that. Should we move on to that shloka, dear? Shloka number eight here. Eight, not shloka number. Let me find out for you. I'm sorry. Shloka number 21 in serial and 12 
according to the section. What does he come to the conclusion that man who has been doing this for ages together, lives together? Pariksha Lokam, he sits to discriminate. Parikshana means to evaluate, to assess, to discriminate. I have put in this much of effort. What do I get back in return? After all this experiencing, he sits, Pariksha. What does he examine? This is what I do, this is what I get. The end result is, I come back again, do again, gain that, exhausting it, come back again. Pariksha. Lokan means what I have achieved. How did I achieve that? Karma Chitan. It is a product of my karma. I have achieved that state of enjoyment in the heavens by means of my lifelong efforts. And I find that imperishable entity known as the reality behind the appearance, known as Brahman or Atman or Paramatma, call it by any name, Sunyama Holy Host, we are not bothered. That is not producible. Akrita Kritena Nasti. Nasti Akrita Kritena. What does it mean? That imperishable reality, I cannot be one with it by this habit of creating what? Creating good deeds, enjoying good results, coming back again. I cannot reach that imperishable, immutable reality which is infinite, eternal, absolute. I can't reach that. My experience tells that, and my logic tells that. I have assessed it. Therefore, I am now well versed in Aparavidya, and I know now there is something known as Paravidya, which will reach me there, and I lose my separateness with the Absolute. I have now understood. Tat Vigyanartham, to know that, I reach my Guru. Tat Vigyanartham, Guru Meva Avigachet. Avigachet means not for the fun of it. He reaches the Guru, with a particular intention, with a particular goal in mind. What is that Guru? Samitapani Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam Guru Avigachet. Guru is the person. Whatever person is, Shrotriyam Guru, Brahmanishtam Guru. Shrotriya means he who has mastered the essential meaning of the Vedas. Shruti is the Vedas. He who has mastered the essential meaning of the Vedas by realization, by experiencing, not only by intellect. He is not an enormous academician of great achievement. It is in the domain of intellect. He is an excellent intellectual gymnast, gymnast. But he is not a guru. Why? Because he has not experienced it. Now, he goes to such a guru who is Shrotriyam, well-versed, and Brahmanishtam. He is poised in the awareness of his own true original nature. How does he go? 
अभिगछित विथ एन इंटेंशन टू लर्न एंड एज अ रेस्पेक्ट फॉर द गुरु ही कैरीज एन ऑफरिंग देर बाय मीनिंग दैट वेन यू गो टू लर्न समथिंग यू गो विथ ग्रेट ह्यूमिलिटी ग्रेट मॉडेस्टी विथ ग्रेट थर्स फॉर लर्निंग and you go to manifest your humility and modesty you take a handful of offering if nothing else take some dry twigs and branches so that the home fire of rishi's ashrama is kept burning samit is fuel you can, that is the minimum what does it mean in the scriptures guru is told don't sell your knowledge don't commercialize it don't sell your knowledge don't commercialize it so how will guru ashrama go guru is sheltering 16 or 20 brahmacharis they have to be fed they have to be educated they have to be clothed the money has to be spent on them how could i but the guru is not supposed to commercialize his teachings so what is the answer the student will not receive the teachings empty handed not for free what will the student do or the student's father and mother do they see that this guru's ashrama gurukula system guru's ashrama is run very smoothly properly correctly and they contribute their might and main to keep the home fire burning let the rishukula system continue let my children don't starve let my guru don't starve let my guru patni don't starve let them repeat samita panim shotriyam brahmanishtam gurum eva abhigachit you have no option eva biniyogi you have no option you have to an intellectual giant will not be able able to teach you how to reach there he may be able to clarify some of your thinking in the domain of intellect but not in the domain of this is dear not in the domain of experiencing this shloka dear 21 sequence wise and 12th according to this section is the turning point from karma kand to gyana kand but now let us see in few shlokas how the upanishad kar how he explains what is that karma kanda we have read the first shloka let us move to the second shloka jada lelayate hi archi samidhe habya bahane tada ajya bhago antarena ahuti प्रतिपादयेत आहुति प्रतिपादयेत लेट अस स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देयर द लास्ट क्वार्टर ऑफ द वर्स आहुति दैट व्हिच इज बीइंग ऑफर्ड इट इज प्लूरल यू हैव टू ऑफर इट फॉर ऑल थ्रू योर लाइफ इन्यूमरेबल टाइम्स दैट इज व्हाई इट इज प्लूरल नॉट सिंगुलर आहुति इज सिंगुलर रश्य इकार एंड डबल इकार दीर्घ इकार इज प्लूर आज आहुति प्रतिपाद यू हैव टू ऑफर योर ऑफरिंग इन सच अ मैन एम करेक्टली थरली प्रिसाइसली एफिशियंटली वेन वेन द होम अग्नि you have seen how homa is performed here on a 
copper plate which will not burn the floor. Then small pieces of dry timber is organized in a triangular manner. <coughs> and then a particular movement of hand and etc, etc, etc. The person who is performing the homer lights the fire. And he waits till the fire is blazing. And then he sees that with help of butter, butter oil or butter, ghee, whatever you say, slowly and slowly the fire is fully aflame. And then in the Arjya Bhaga, in your frontal side to the left or to the right, dears, I will confess I don't know much of it and I don't bother to know of it. It is now prehistoric and at this age it is obsolete. I will tell you how this sentiment Swamiji has converted into a universal performance. I'll come to that later on. Let me go ahead. You offer your Ahuti, what you want to offer, offer your offerings in that manner. On Tarena, there's a particular space in that triangle. To the left in your front side or right in your front side, I'm not very sure. Those who perform Homam, they would know very well. Then he says, this direction, performance of Homa, is very common in the previous days. It is still common in various parts of India and also in Nepal, where Hinduism of the ancient culture still has a hold. Very common is known as Agni Hotra Yaga. Agni Hotra. That's a name. It has to be done at dawn, it has to be done at dusk with the movement of the sun. And it has to be done in a very, very well prescribed manner from which you cannot deviate. These are the instructions. Then he says, Jasya Agnihotram Adarsham Apurnamasham Achaturmasyam Anagrayanam Athiti Barjitam Cha. All these. These are ancillaries of that Yaga. Agnihotra Yaga. As I told you and I confess to you, I don't know much of the details. But the spirit is there. Let me exchange that idea. <coughs> there is an ancillary activity known as darsha. If your Agnihatra is without proper performance of darsha, the ancillary, your Agnihatra will not be fruitful, will be harmful. Think of it. Darsha, Purnamasha, Chaturmasha, Anagram, Atiti Varjitam. These are the ancillaries. Darsha, Purnamasha, Chaturmasha, Agrayana, and Atiti Varjita. You have not entertained the guest. These five, they are ancillaries. Before you start your Agnihotra properly. And then Ahutam, Avaishyadevam, Abhidhinahutam, Apsaptamangsasya Lokan Hinast. He continues. If it is not properly offered, 
it is not done before the Vaishyadeva's worship, and if it is done in a haphazard manner, you are in a hurry, you do it. Nothing doing. No error is acceptable. No forgiveness. What happens? Instead of receiving good results, if these ancillaries, any one of them is faulty or not properly done or mistaken or forgotten, Three generations above, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather. Your son, your grandson, your great-grandson, and you are the doer. Seven generations. They will suffer the curse because of this faulty performance. Now better you think, dear, this dicey game of Karvakanda has to be done with these eight conditions and each of them must be perfect and correct and thorough and done with Shraddha. If you don't do so, this is what will befall you. He warns you beforehand. Now you think, I am a victim of circumstances. The world does not move according to my will. And I have decided that I will perform Agnihotra Yaga throughout my lifetime. And this Agnihotra Yaga has these eight or nine or seven ancillary activities. And those are subject to circumstances. Whether I'll be able to get those to done in time or not is not known to me. But I have to do throughout my life. No room for mistakes. What type of heaven, dear, it will give to me? And if unwillingly, unknowingly, I make some mistake, commit some mistake, my three upper generation, my three lower generation, myself, all our good deeds will burn back into ashes. This is what Karvakanda promises you. Now it is for you to think. But mind you, people still did not know what is Atma, what is Brahman, how to achieve. We were then in a process of evolution to go to heaven. <coughs> to go to heaven was the end all and be all of life. So if I have to go to heaven, what can I do? I have to do this. So willy-nilly I have to. Because at that time, the Vedantic conclusions were not arrived. <coughs> I'm sorry. We had arrived there, but it was not popular. So majority of the people took to Karvakanda. And it is absolutely, you'll see the later shlokas, they will tell you also how things are happening. This is the first part. This is what it is. At that time of history, Vedic history or literature, the society knew about that pursuit of Atman or Brahman. But the society was still evolving. And I know I can create my destiny. I can create it. Let me try it. And whatever may have happen, if it, even if hell breaks loose, I will do it. And it was popular. Today, after so many thousand years, 
we think it is sheer madness. But we perform those same mistakes in our day-to-day -day life as of today. The shape, size and the name of the ritual has changed. To please your boss for a promotion is as impossible as Agnihotri Yad. But you do. This is how you should try to understand. Don't say it was absolute stupidity of that age. We are still stupid. We are still behaving that way. So this is the first aspect that Karma Kanda, though it promises, but it exacts from you things which are beyond your control. Let us move on to the next. He describes to the performer of Agnihotri Yaga, Kali Karali Manojabacha Shulohita Cha Jashudumra Barna Spulingini Vishruchi Cha Devi Leela Yamana Hishapta Juha. I would request you when a bonfire is burnt. When you go out camping and all that, you buy bonfire, you lit a bonfire. Sit aside and watch the character of the flames. Some of them are dark. Some of them are bluish. Some of them are brilliantly red. Some of them are orange. Some of them are effulgent, colorless like light, right from the fuel to the tip of the flame. If you study, you will find the flames are named by the Upanishads, by the Vedas, a different name. Kali, that is blackish. Karali, very black. Manojava, like a red hibiscus. Sulohita, reddish. Sudhumra Barna, smoky color. Spulingini, emitting sparks. And some of them are as bright as light. They are all coming up. When that is happening, then you will have to offer your offerings. Eteshu jacharate bhajamaneshu jathakalam cha ahutaya hi adadayan tannanti etashu jacharashayo jatra devanam patireka adibhaja. If you can do so, dears, your Agnihotra doesn't have those eight faults. Darsha, Purnamasha, Chaturmasha, Agrayana, and etc., Vishnaruchi, and etc. They don't have it. You wait till that is fully aflame. Then you do it correctly, thoroughly, perfectly. If everything falls in its proper place, and when these flames are of these, dis these descriptions, then you put it thoroughly, properly, correctly, excellently, faultlessly. What happens? You, after your death, when this body falls off, the rays of the sun will be your vehicle. Those rays of the sun will take you to that abode where the Lord God of the Devatas, Indra, lives. And you will be living with him in Indra Loka. He doesn't totally decry. He tells you what are the pitfalls and what is the result. 
So please be open-minded. And I will tell you in due course of time that don't smile at them. Don't belittle them. That was an age people thought this is what should be done. Today's age, we are still doing the same thing in different name, in different form, in different manner, in different character. We are still there. Only the name and form and qualities and attitudes have changed. So we have to, we to stop here now. We have studied the fifth shloka of the second khanda. What is that? That if you can perform your yagas and yagyas correctly, thoroughly, perfectly, excellently, with total devotion and dedication and determination, and God help you, no obstacle comes in your path. If you can do so, what will happen is the beams of the sun's rays will carry your subtle body after death to the abode of the god of the gods, Indra, who stays there and Indra Loka, heaven, you will spend time with Indra. This is how the Karma Kanda aspect is partially mentioned. In the next shloka, he will say how welcome you are and how right royally you are received and your ego is pampered. As it is today, your ego is pampered. The sixth shloka will tell you that. Let us wait for the next class. And after that, the seventh shloka will teach you a man of discretion and discrimination. He evaluates and he says, Oh no, I am spending so much of time, so much of energy, I am spending my whole life and what I get in return is a perishable short-term achievement. Is there anything better I get? With equal effort, I get an endless result. Is it possible? The seventh shloka the questioning starts. So we have covered the, I would say, Karmakanda part of it, not totally, but the most abstract and the most subtle part of it. Thank you, dears. We'll meet again next Saturday and we'll carry on. I do not know whether this, this part of the Upanishad is interesting you or not, but please don't dis get disinterested. This is a part, a stepping stone to that goal. Wait for that goal. Thank you, dears. Thank you ever so much. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu